Hey everybody, did you hear? Bakugan is the new Beyblade now! Hey everybody, this is Kodok here, and today I am finally going to be taking a look at the brand new Bakugan remake. This is the third Bakugan series we've gotten in America. Of course, there was the original Bakugan Battle Brawlers that came out in the 2000s that I was actually a fan of. I actually really liked it. It's how I got my, my channel start. Following that, we had Bakugan Battle Planet, which I liked like the Bakugan designs, but I wasn't really a fan of the show. But now we have the third series, which is what most people are calling it, the, the remake remake, the reboot of the reboot, which is currently just titled Bakugan. So we are going to be taking a look at uh, the Diamond Special Attack Ventry, the Diamond Bakugan, the Special Treatment Bakugan still seem to exist out there, although I don't know if they have the same significance they used to have. But of course, what everyone is really talking about is the fact that they now spin like a top. They have the big attack ring, they have the ripcord spinning feature, they are... they're Beyblades! And I and a lot of people are puzzled as to why they did it this way. Now, this is not the first time they've actually done ripcord Bakugan. Back in the original Battle Brawlers days, there actually were some special attack Bakugan that had the gyro disc inside, similar to how this is done, where you yank a cord and it stabilizes the Bakugan in theory as it spins over to the gate card to land on it properly. This, I think, is kind of supposed to be the same thing, only with the added attack ring, kind of like uh, <clears throat> kind of like Bakugan or kind of like Ninjago or kind of like so many things. This reminds me a bit more of like the Bay Warriors. I don't know if... Uh, if any of you remember those, it was from the time when they uh, Hasbro felt that Beyblade could do no wrong, so they made Bay Wheels, Bay Warriors, and Bay Raiders. And Bay Warriors were kind of like this. They had an internal gyro that you pulled the lever on, but, you know, everybody kind of forgot about those in a jiffy. I have seen the previews for the new show, and I'm not terribly impressed with what I'm looking at. I was not a fan of the story of Bakugan Battle Planet. I felt that they... The, the stories they told were either too childish or poorly executed or, like, did nothing really to further the story. I, I went through about 26 episodes before giving up on it, so you can't say I didn't give it a fair shake. Um, but at the very least, the character designs they had were very expressive. They had, they had you know, a lot of room. They had, um, you know, the big faces that are easy to, to have do, like, cool effects. Uh, these new designs look so safe and generic by comparison. I'm not uh, too thrilled about it. So anyway, back to this. The big central gimmick of the new Bakugan is that they come in two pieces, a top half and a bottom half. Oh, splitting Bakugan. I've actually seen that before. They did it with Mictanium Surge, the season where it got canceled. Oh, but Bakutech did it too. They had Bakugan that split in half right before it got canceled. Hmm. Well, anyway, let's take a look at what we have. We, of course, have our special attack uh, Ventry. It has the gold label on the top, so it is still easy to tell when you have a variant model where you can just kind of quickly skim to see if you can find the gold. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. Um, we have our character here, which looks like um, a bird man of uh, some stripe. Although, in this case, it's diamond. I don't know if this is supposed to be chaos. It has some red streaks on it, which I guess is meant to be like, uh, to convey the element of the diamond. Um, I think regular Ventry is meant to be chaos. I do see a lot of blue on the base design here. And I see, well, it's kind of hard to tell what that symbol is. It's, uh, I think it's supposed to be like a spinning, like a, like a face going bleh, or, you know, it, it reminds me kind of of Wobbuffet a bit. <laughs> um, not sure about that. It, of course, also has a ring, which kind of looks like a, a kind of looks like a bow and arrow from what I'm seeing here. And um, I can see the the metal disc inside that I'm supposed to pull with the yellow rip cord. That's a little tricky to see, but if you peek underneath there, you can see like the the yellow rip cord underneath there. I suppose if there is another benefit to the fact that the Bakugan can be split in half, it's that it does give these packages a very narrow profile compared to the old one. It is a lot easier to stock the shelves onto here, um, to, to stock onto the onto the pegs. That was probably the biggest dilemma with the Bakugan is they needed a lot of extra space for the unfolded form or the sphere form. By having it be in pieces, it fits in a lot better. Of course, it is also the multi-language type, and I think that's probably the reason that they've changed the game is to make it easier for them to print in multiple languages. So, at least the basic game. We do know the rules of the basic game, which I will get into as we 
get this thing open. We don't really know about the complicated rules yet, but uh, let us have a look. And this one's actually pretty simple. It's uh, a package that you can open without destroying. And as you know, I am a big fan of things like that. So if you want to play with it, but then uh, put it back for archival purposes, you can absolutely do that. We have our cards here, which are in, uh, in a paper booster pack. I didn't know they actually, uh, I mean, I guess that makes sense to have them in paper. Hi, it's me again, talking about this in post-editing. Um, I actually realized as I was editing this that I actually like these paper packages a whole lot more now because I remember how with the Bakugan Battle Planet sets, they came in these plastic packages that were taped shut and were a real pain in the butt to try and open without damaging anything inside. So the fact that they've switched to paper, which is really easy to cut or tear open, is a huge improvement. We have our plastic inlay with our uh, pieces here. We have our paper, which you can see I've already kind of already kind of peeked inside and looked at the cards. Um, oh, the cards. That is probably one of the things that uh, people will most want to hear about from me. So the thing about the cards is we, of course, have our gate cards, which we've had in both iterations so far. But the interesting thing is the character cards because they come in pieces. So we have our like sort of character base and our, um, I guess this is supposed to be the bottom piece or the special attack piece. The idea is that these two come together to form one singular card and you combine their stats together. It does have this little kind of nook here, this kind of jag here, which makes it easier to line up the card. I'm not sure how well this thing goes inside a card sleeve. I don't think it's very well, but they do actually have a bunch of accessories that they're going to be releasing for the series, which I actually think look pretty nice. Like they have like a volcano and a glacier, which you can stash your Bakugan and roll them down. Those I think look really cool. Those I think will make like good centerpieces for like a decorative display as well as they would for uh, play, probably even more so. Uh, they also have sets that allow you to hold it in place, but that looks like it's actually gonna be pretty expensive. Like this is like the basic Bakugan and it was like 10 bucks. So let's have a look at our components. We of course have our big, uh, our big yellow ripcord, which is how we operate the gyro in the center of this piece. And the the this actually comes off. You can actually pull it off while it is uh, while it is completed, but it's probably honestly better for it to do it while it's like this. But you can actually see that I can spin the gyro inside of this thing. But when you hook it up to the big ripcord, which is frankly awfully large for. Uh, for something that is supposed to be, you know, for, for something this small. I don't know why they felt the need to give it such a massive ripcord. It looks like it's not picky. It looks like you could have it rotate either way you want, depending. Um, but the back again, top here, this is sort of our creature. Uh, it kind of, uh, it has like, I think a pair of like little fold out feet down here, but there isn't really much you can do with this uh, this downward design here, considering the fact that it is, you know, mostly containing the gyro. So that is gonna be a pretty severe limit on design space. So most of the Bakugan are going to be their top half. And this actually looks, kind of resembles an Archaeopteryx when I look at it with the big, uh, the feathers that almost seem to lead down to the feet. But I guess it's supposed to be some kind of hawk or eagle. Now, in order to actually attach it, you have to close it most of the way, then it will have, uh, it actually has like a rail, like a bit of a rail here where you attach it on and then you slide it down the rail. Then you close it. And there we have our complete diamond Bakugan. Um, I have noticed, oh no, it looks like, uh, no, that's, I thought that was silver paint for a second, but that's actually the gyro on the inside. It is nice that the diamonds let us see like the inner workings, inner mechanics of everything. Like there's the magnet, um, there's the big gyro disc. Um, but there is only paint on the top half. I'm not sure if I am entirely enthusiastic over the limited design space that these gyros will create, especially since they're in service of a gimmick that most people have kind of scoffed at, myself included. But it, of course, works like any other Bakugan. You put it on the gate card and boom, it pops open. Has, uh, has in this case, kind of a, a bit of a stooped posture is what this gives it the effect of doing. It looks like it's kind of rearing up and, you know, broadening itself out the way you see like, like various birds, birds of prey, specifically like owls and stuff do. They will 
they will sort of puff themselves up to make themselves look more intimidating. So that's actually a pretty nice posture for this design specifically. There was definitely some thought put into how this design was done. Okay, this is a bit of a problem. The thing is, it has the little spinning bump on the bottom. That's what enables the spinning feature of the toy. The problem with that is because of that kind of bump there, rather than like jump on the gate card, it will either like kind of nudge into it and not climb up, or it will climb up, open, and then just fly away, just totally nullifying everything. So I don't think they thought these too well through design-wise because they don't really want to work very well with the gate cards. I think that's gonna be a problem to how well these things work. It was frustrating me to, for me to get this thing to open, let alone to actually have it stay on the card. Now, as for the gate card itself, the way the rules work is what you're supposed to do is take four of these gate cards. You actually notice how the gate card has like multiple locations on it. And these, um, align with the stats that the characters have. And apparently Diamond Ventry having two stats at 400 is actually pretty good. Um, the highest stat I've seen is 500, so two 400s means it's easier to be a threat. It's a little difficult to make out here, but the way these gate cards work is you don't just want to land a Bakugan on a gate card, but you want to land it on specific locations on the card. It's a little hard to tell because they used blue to separate this, but each of these like, masses here. They probably should have done these separating lines in sort of a bright white or a bright wet red, something that doesn't get lost in the clouds, literally in this case, is depending on the spot where your Bakugan lands determines what power it uses. So you have the speed, you have the attack, and you have the toughness. So if I landed on this mountain, I'd be using the speed stat, which is actually this thing's worst stat, which is kind of weird since it's an eagle. We have the, uh, the blue sky gives us the combat stat and the uh, red gives us the toughness stat. Although I imagine there's gonna be a lot of edge cases where the thing lands on an edge and you're not entirely sure what to do with it. The players will argue that whichever side lets them win is the side that it landed on. So the fact that they've made these kind of oblong shapes on the cards, I think is going to cause a bit of unpredictable havoc as far as gameplay is concerned. But then again, I don't know if there is too much on the gameplay. So wherever you land on the cards and you and your friends sort of build a little pictogram together, at least that's what the rules implies, you assemble sort of a pictogram to actually play on, um, depending on where you land is the stat that you use for battle. So I hope you have a lot of really good skill when it comes to uh, rolling or spinning or whatever comes to it. It, um, I don't think it allows as much planning as the cores do. The cores offered a lot of depth. Um, the problem is Spin Master kind of, uh, kind of leaned away from the depth of the card game when it didn't turn out to be an immediate hit when they gave it absolutely no support. That's what happens to card games. Even card games that do get support, uh, don't, might not do well, but if you, if you don't give it, like, any support at all, even a good game can fall apart, which is what the Battle Planet game actually did. So this is a good look at sort of how the basic one works and operates. I will try to see if I can find some more of the stuff. This, the, 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 the street date hasn't officially like been met yet, but stores are still putting them out anyway as they are getting sent stock. Uh, we will see if I can get some more stuff in the future. We'll see if I can get some of those dioramas. We'll see if I can get some of the, the set because they actually have a set that holds the cards in place. Uh, I, it seems like an interesting idea, but I kind of wish they'd done it a bit more intelligently. Um, the more intelligent thing to do would be to have this rear set would be to have this top card be like a full card and then the rear card can like slot in inside the card sleeve over it so that or you could easily stack it on top without having it be sliced up. It'll be a lot e it would be a lot easier to dispense cards that weren't sliced in half and um, and it would be a lot easier to like put it in sleeves or put it in some other kind of protective thing. Um, I mean, it would give an opportunity, you'd expand this art a bit, and you know, the idea is that this is like the bottom half, so it would like cut off part of the art, so you'd see that it's like, oh, that's the legs this thing is wearing. I honestly think that would probably be a better approach. As it stands, I worried for how well these cards can hold up. But yeah, that is a quick look at 
the new Bakugan season. And until next time, this is Codex signing off.